Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. I've been called out by Steve Olson. Now, earlier today he uploaded this video, and one of my viewers alerted me to the fact that about 14 minutes into the video he calls me out by name, more or less. Now, I guess it's only fair since I did mention him in my video last night, but I wasn't trying to call him out specifically, I was just trying to trace the origin of some of these claims that are running around now. But uh, let's play his video here and see what he has to say. It is. And they do not want us to report on this. They came at us with their biggest guns. They came at us with their biggest shills, and they came at us with their biggest trolls, and we're not letting go. No, and astronomy.com, I'm calling you out. I'm Let's... calling. Okay, hang on. Let's pause it right there for a second. My channel name is Astronomy Live, not astronomy.com, guys. Astronomy.com is the website for Astronomy Magazine which isn't saying anything about you guys or this mysterious so-called object on stereo head HI2, which we'll get to in a minute. Just wanted to clear that up. I mean, not, and our audience doesn't like this when we take a defensive position, but I want to know. Bring your scientists, bring your PhD physicists, let's have a live program. You bring your physicists, we'll bring ours. Yeah, I'll bring physicists. I got two or three of them that we can pick from. And, and well, I challenge you on this because you see, sirs, you had fun poking at us, and that's fine. My, I got the skin. Listen, anyone, I think laughter is a, uh, a good, healthy um, thing to have. We laugh at ourselves all the time. Yeah, we do. The, the problem was... Okay, so he invites me to a live show, right? He invites me onto his show. You just heard him say that, right? The thing he's not telling you is that he's already blocked me from commenting on his video. So anything I say is not publicly visible. So I can't accept his invitation. That's a rather disingenuous thing to do, don't you think? Here's a screenshot I took a while ago on one of his previous videos about this subject. And he invited me onto his show. And I accepted his invitation. I've accepted his invitation multiple times, actually. I, I came out onto his channel. I posted a comment saying, uh, I'd love to come on your show. Please let me come on your show. I, I'll gladly explain all this. Uh, I never heard back. Then I saw a comment where he offered uh, me to come on his show. And uh, he says here, we openly invite him to debate us on our show, by the way. So... I accepted his invitation. I said that I accepted his invitation. Only if you look over here on the left, on the page where this, where these comments are located, we openly invite him to debate us on our show, by the way, you don't see my comment in there because he's blocked me. It's not publicly visible. And so my friend Daza asked him why I'm blocked on his channel because I can't accept his invitation if he blocks me. So I may not be able to post public comments on his channel, but I can certainly post my own videos on my channel. So let it be known that I have accepted his invitation, but I can't get in touch with him because he's blocked me. So if he wants me to actually come on a show, he's going to have to come on my channel and tell me how to go about that. All right? Give me his contact information, send me a message, because I can't reach him if he's blocking me. It's pretty simple. Moving on, in another video he also uploaded today, he claims that uh, something strange is going on, that uh, an object appears to have exploded when it hit the Earth occulter in the image. Again, he's trying to suggest that there's a physical object there, that it's not just an, not just an occulter within the camera that's blocking light. It's an actual physical object in space. Okay? Now, we've been over this many times, but we're going to have to go over it again, I'm afraid. So I'm going to play a video here where he claims that this thing is exploding, and we're going to take a look and see what's really going on. So let me back up this video a bit, and we're going to take a listen to what he says. Okay, today we're going to be focusing a lot on H1SREM. And the first thing, the, the main thing that we're looking at, you know, guys, just like a space up there, you can go look at that today yourself if you want to. Yeah, okay, see my previous video? It's not a spaceship. It's a recurring lens flare that appears every time Venus reaches that angular separation from the Sun in HI2. But anyway, this occluded area, or this what they call baffle area, May 10th through the 20th, 
a object was next to, I want to show you this video, which was right next to um, this baffle, which we actually think there is something else behind this baffle, actually shows it exploding. I'll show you this clip right here. and. Okay, so he claims that was an object exploding when it hit the baffle or a coulter. Right, well, let's first establish what object that was. Okay, so we can go to these images from May 2016. If we go to the stars version of the images, it will actually label planets for us. That's Jupiter. That's right, the object he says is exploding is actually the planet Jupiter. Now let's again review briefly that it's well established in documentation of stereo ahead HI2 or just the HI cameras that this is the Earth occulter. This is a diagram of HI2 and various points of interest within the camera. And this is clearly labeled as the Earth occulter. We've been over this before. So it's a physical occulter within the camera of HI2. It's not a physical object way out in space that other objects can run into. Now, let's take a look at the images he showed. Here are the images from Stereohead HI2 in May 2016. And oh my goodness, Jupiter hits the Earth occulter and explodes! First there's a white flash and then a black flash. Why is that? Well, we'll get that to that in a minute. But first of all, let us assume for a moment that this is just a normal occurrence and that Jupiter did not actually explode. We would then expect that you would see the same sort of occurrence happen every time Jupiter passes behind the Earth occulter, right? And if you look back at images from earlier years, guess what? That's exactly what you see. Now, I mentioned in my previous video, and I need to point it out again, that the current orientation of this image from Stereo Head is the post-fly-behind-the-sun period, right? And so the whole spacecraft was flipped 180 degrees when it went around the sun. And as a result, if you look back at previous years where Jupiter was actually emerging from the Earth occulter, the stars appear to be moving the other way in the sense that Jupiter now emerges from the Earth occulter and the Earth occulter is on the opposite side of the image. For example, here are images from 2013. And you can see Jupiter emerging from behind the Earth occulter. And once again, there's a flash, a white and a black flash when that happens. So it's moving the other direction. Well, actually, you can see the stars and planets are still moving left to right in the image, but now the Earth occulter is on the opposite side of the image because the spacecraft itself is physically flipped the other way. The purpose of the heliospheric imagers is to monitor the space between the Earth and the Sun. And so now that the spacecraft is on the other side of the Sun, it has to flip 180 degrees to continue to monitor uh, that's that region of space. So we can see the same thing happening in reverse order. In fact, I can just click reverse and you can basically see the same thing happening, only the difference is now the flash is black and then white instead of the forward direction where it appears light and then it appears dark. And there's a good reason for that. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, I just want to show you the previous instances of this happening in the stereo head HI2 imager. So here's an instance from 2012. And by the way, you can still see that same lens flare in there. Once again, here's an instance from uh, 2011. Same thing, Jupiter suddenly appears in a brilliant flash and then emerges from behind the Earth occulter. Here's 2010. And here's 2009. So yes, every single time Jupiter emerges from behind the Earth occulter or in the reverse case, if it happens to be on the other side and it goes into the Earth occulter, there is a brilliant flash of light, and then it looks dark in the SREM images. So why does it look dark in the SREM images? Well, first we need to understand what the SREM images actually are. 
So in this paper, which detailed the methodology used to detect the tenuous heliosphere, they talk about how to control these images, how to calibrate these images in order to maximize the contrast and detect the faint heliosphere while not being blinded by all the stars, the Milky Way, everything else in the image. So it says, once a summed image has been completed and returned, the CME, that's a coronal mass ejection signal, is identified either by the subtraction of a base frame or the subtraction of a recent image. These approaches are common in the use for coronagraph observations. Subtraction of a recent image displays recent changes to the heliospheric brightness. And if you look on the page for the imager and you look down at the bottom, it specifically says R diff means a running difference of images. SREM is the running difference with cross correlation star removal. So basically, this is a running difference between images with the stars removed. So we can do something somewhat similar by calibrating the images in a similar way. Now, I downloaded the raw FITS file data from May 2016. And you can see the result of that here. And so in this GIF animation, you can see Jupiter going into the Earth occulter and this flash of light. Now, as Jupiter goes into the occulter, the flash diminishes in brightness. It actually peaks in brightness a couple frames after the first frame, though it's hard to tell. And so what happens then, if we do a running difference of the images, is that because each successive image is getting darker, if you subtract the previous image from the current image, you end up with a dark spot. That's why the flash is first bright white as, the, as this uh, diffraction of light from the edge of the Earth occulter starts to grow in brightness, and then it turns black as it starts to decrease in brightness. At first, when it's growing in brightness, each successive image is getting brighter and brighter in terms of that diffraction of light off the edge of the Earth occulter. And so when you do a running difference, you see a bright flash. But then as it starts to dim, the opposite happens, and you actually get a dark spot in the running difference. Now, these images have been aligned on the stars. That's why the stars appear to be stationary here. And if you look, you can actually see the edge of the field of view of the HI2 imager is appearing to move. It's as if the perspective of the spacecraft is moving. But what I've actually done here is use Deep Sky Stacker to align these images on the stars. And then when we do a running difference of images, we can effectively subtract out most of the stars pretty easily and get something similar to the SREM images that we see on the Stereo website. So if I go to that, what you see is a bit messy because the alignment isn't perfect, but you can see what initially started off as a brighter than background flash quickly turns into this dark flash because with each successive image, that diffraction that's coming off the Earth occulter is growing dimmer as Jupiter goes behind the Earth occulter. And so because you're subtracting the previous image from the current image, that dark spot actually lasts a brief moment of time even after Jupiter is fully behind the Earth occulter because you're still subtracting the previous image from the current image. So that's why it looks like that. And as we saw, this happened every time Jupiter emerged from the Earth occulter. But in 2008, something very strange happens here. Jupiter is emerging from the Earth occulter, but there's something else there too. So if Jupiter is exploding all of these times, how would we really know that, right? I mean, perhaps it's exploding repeatedly for some reason, or some massive explosion is happening near Jupiter? I'm sure that claim's going to be out there soon. So, what might we look for that could test that hypothesis? Well, Jupiter is not the only planet to have emerged from behind the Earth occulter. Just think about it. What's it called? It's called the Earth occulter, right? Why was it put there? It was put there to block the light from Earth early in the mission when the spacecraft was still close to Earth and Earth was extremely bright. But it didn't block Earth forever. At a certain point, Earth itself emerged from the Earth occulter, and that's exactly what happened in 2008. In September 2008, Earth started to emerge from the Earth occulter on Stereo Head. As Stereo Head traveled ahead of Earth farther and farther past a certain point, that Earth occulter ends, and Earth itself will start to emerge into the image. 
And so what I did was take uh, the images from that time period and put them into an animation to take a look and see uh, what that looked like. Again, these are these images here are with a running difference, and that's why it looks so strange with a bright flash and then a dark flash. But if we just take a look at the raw FITS files and process them ourselves, we can actually see all the stars and see what's really happening in a more natural way. And that's what I'm going to show you guys. So first of all, once again, just to review, these are the images from May 2016 showing Jupiter traveling into the Earth occulter, traveling behind the Earth occulter, and disappearing. And as that happens, you see this glare coming from diffraction off the edge of that occulter start to fade. But what happened in 2008 was the Earth emerged from behind the Earth occulter. And that's what you're seeing here. Jupiter emerged at about the same time, but it travels much faster relative to the Earth occulter. Why is that? Well, think about it. Stereo ahead is orbiting the Sun, but it's only traveling slightly ahead of Earth in its orbit, or its, its orbital period, its year, is only slightly less than Earth's. So its velocity relative to Earth is not all that great. It takes a long time for Earth to transit the image relative to something like Jupiter, an outer planet. So what we see is a more gradual reveal, a much slower progression of Earth emerging from behind the occulter. So as a result of that, I took images from the start of each day uh, throughout September and looked over a much longer time span to see this occurring. So as Earth emerges, you can see, once again, another flash of light as light diffracts off the edge of the occulter. And you can actually see it, this diffraction, produce uh, glare on both sides of Earth, even on the occulter. So if the claim is that this is representing some sort of explosion, and that the object is exploding. That would mean that Earth exploded in 2008. Last I checked, that didn't happen. So, no, it's not an explosion. It's just that when objects, bright objects like Jupiter and Earth, are close to the edge of this Earth occulter, you get diffraction, and you'll see this flaring on either side. In the case of running difference images, that can produce strange effects as that flash first grows black grows bright, and then as it dims, it'll appear very dark in the running difference. So that does it for this, this episode. I'm sure there'll be more to come, but I hope this clears up the questions for now. Thanks for watching, folks. Clear skies.